Half in the bag. <sighs> well, we're uh, back from the movie theater. Sure are. Just saw Pixels. Uh, yep, that's right. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Jay! We forgot to stop at the bank. Oh, shit, I completely forgot. It's okay. I don't think these guys have any intention of paying us anyways. Listen, I have a plan. They have a safe in the back, and I'm pretty sure it's filled with cash. When we get a chance, we're gonna go back there, and I'm gonna pick the lock and break into it. Okay. I'm just gonna fucking take all their money. If these fuckers won't pay so us... So guys, oh. Jay, Mike, what did you think of Pixels? Oh, uh, let's, let's discuss Pixels. We're gonna talk about that now, huh? Okay. Why are you looking around awkwardly? Uh, do you have a safe? Uh, of, of course we do, for all of our, our daily large cash uh, that we handle. A lot of cash that we handle here, keeping the safe in the back. Why? That's a weird question. Well, I just, I saw it back there, and uh, I was wondering what the combination was. Well, the combination is 35, uh, 22, well, um, what? You're, I was waiting for you to stop me. Oh, no. I was waiting for you to stop That's funny. I, I, yeah, yeah, you can keep going. I like, I like just giving it to Was that a 20, 25, a 22, the second number? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if 25. I get this, the first two. You want, you want to do that where I just do the whole thing then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just, I mean, like, you know, we're all friends here. I mean, you guys have been working at the store. You should know the combination to the safe to make all the cash Well, deposits. yeah, I, we, you never gave it to us. Yeah. And, and nobody actually came into the store, and, you know, but, you know, I just, I saw a safe and, you know, I was, you know, I, I've, I maybe Al Capone put his stuff in there, you know, what's the number? In 1982, NASA launched a time capsule into space containing examples of our life and culture in hopes of contacting extraterrestrial life. Unfortunately, the message was taken the wrong way. Well, I'm glad we all went to the movies together. I hope our time here together doesn't end in horrific violence. What is Pixels about? Pixels is the new Adam Sandler comedy. Uh, Adam Sandler film. Starring Adam Sandler. Uh, and Kevin James, and some lady, and Peter Dinklage. Her and name's Michelle Moynihan. Michelle Moynihan and Josh Gad. And uh, everyone phones in their performance except for Brian Cox, who somehow is a professional still. Beyond just not being familiar with Adam Sandler movies, I mean, this is actually my very first Adam Sandler vehicle. That's amazing. And he is the worst part of the movie. He, he looks visibly miserable in this movie. Yeah. I'm just sorry. He looks like he just walked out of his trailer and he just wants to get back to his trailer. So he's like, all right, here's the line. And OK, bye. <laughs> I mean, if you were if you were going to take this movie like seriously, I mean, you would want a, a likable, relatable main character. I mean, you would want like a Chris Pratt. He'd sure. probably be great in that role. But instead, he's, he's just the most unlikable, uncharismatic man who has ever lived. Yeah, this movie's terrible. <laughs> the script is terrible. Yeah, this is Hollywood big Hollywood money exploiting the resurgence of 80s pop culture uh, interest. And it's just, I don't know, I, would you call it sickening or uh, depressing? I would, it, I would call it cynical, definitely. Yeah. I, this definitely cemented for me, like, and I, I've kind of, this. I've been thinking about this more and more over the last couple of years, but this cemented, like, I am completely over the celebration of nostalgia. Like this is just like the most soulless thing. And it's like, I, yeah, remember Donkey Kong? Here's Donkey Kong. And there's nothing clever about it. If, if you really wanted to go for like the 80s nostalgia, it's like the whole opening of that movie was actually kind of charming with the kids going to the arcade and enjoying themselves. Once the Cheap Trick song ended, that's when it yeah. just dive bombed. I would, have, I would have rather have seen a movie about young kids who, who, who practicing for the big video game competition, and that would have been neat. Sure. <laughs> it's called The Wizard. <laughs> I haven't seen The Wizard. You've never seen The Wizard? No. <laughs> I, I, I hate, um, uh, was it Michael Savage, Adam Savage? What's his fucking name? Fred Savage. Fred Savage. Fred Savage. I Why hate you, Fred Savage. How do you hate Fred Savage? I don't know, I just do. Fred, Fred Savage I don't have, I don't have You're a the only reason. person on the planet that hates Fred Savage. Fred Savage was like eight years old when he was on The Wonder Years, and then he disappeared off the face of the planet. How the hell can you hate him? For some reason, I just find him annoying. You're just jealous of Fred Savage, because you had a big crush on Paul. <laughs> I'll set up for Winnie, reverse it with Paul, create yeah, yeah, joke. Yeah, I get it, I get it. Check. Check mark. 
Mike, that was almost a joke. Almost a joke. And it was a joke using a reference as a setup. Almost a joke is closer to a joke than anything in Pixels. That's right. There were no jokes. There were so many what moments. You remember we, we had the what moment counter or whatever for <laughs> best? We are like, what? And there's just those, those like, someone yells something that makes no sense. You're just like, what? Yeah. Is that supposed to be funny? Yeah, th well, you had mentioned there's the scene early on uh, when they're, try they're just starting to figure out what's going on. Oh, we didn't even mention that Kevin James is the president of the United States in this film. Uh, and he's childhood friends with Adam Sandler. They were both video game fans. So this attack happens completely out of nowhere. Just all of a sudden, there's an attack. There's no setup. There's no buildup. It's just, oh, someone's being attacked by something. And then uh, Kevin James calls in his best childhood buddy, Adam Sandler. And Adam Sandler says, this is like Gattaca. This is Gattaca. Gattaca? Galaga. Galaga. Gattaca is a film starring Ethan Hawke. Galaga. There we go. Uh, so he's in this boardroom with all these stuffy boardroom presidential people that are, are serious about their jobs because this is someone invading the earth. And then Adam Sandler comes in in shorts and just starts making fun of everybody for no reason. And you had mentioned that it felt like a bad attempt to do like a Judd Apatow, Adam McKay riff moment. It, it, it felt like a like improv comedy. There was a lot of scenes that kept going on, and it, it felt like uh, it felt like Anchorman, where a scene would go on a little too long because the actors were riffing and having a good time. And so this scene, like you said, Adam Sandler's in a boardroom. Oh, get out of here, you crazy kid! And for no reason whatsoever, he decides to rib everyone in the room. Yeah. There's a guy, when he first shows up, there's a guy that thinks he's the sandwich delivery man, but he's not. And then so when Adam Sandler's leaving, he's like, your sandwiches are here. No, they're not. Oh, and they're like, what? That was the joke. Because he was, yeah, he wanted sandwiches because he was overweight. Because he was a great big fat guy. Uh, uh, yeah, I, there were moments like that where I was like, is Adam <laughs> Sandler improv or is this scripted? And I didn't know. Well, what's worse? What would be worse if that was improv or if that was scripted? B uh, both. They're both just equally <laughs> terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah. I believe that some alien life force sent down real life video games to attack us. That makes sense. I'll get to my predictions. Oh yes, we wrote, <laughs> we wrote predictions. Oh no, I didn't know we, we had homework. Now my, my predictions are terrible and the movie was worse than my predictions. <laughs> I'm, I was going for Roland Emmerich level. Okay. Uh, uh, so I have Adam Sandler will have a degree in computers or something like that, but will have squandered his potential and works in a video game store or a Geek Squad type place. Oh, wow. the, movie, the movie's events will be his redemption. His squandered potential was only not winning the Donkey Kong challenge as a, as a five-year-old. Yeah. That's, that's literally that, the high point of his life. I think they make a joke about Mississippi Technical Institute. M he went to MIT. M M Mississippi Institute of Technology. Yeah. MIT. MIT. But I don't know whether that was a joke or not. But, <laughs> but really, like... It I, was supposed to be, but it was so botched. But I was thinking he would have an estranged son or divorced wife who they think he's a loser. You can't see his son, on, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then he redeems himself through the events of the movie. They didn't even bother with that. No. They mentioned an ex-wife, but they were too lazy to show her. Or even get into it. Yeah. Or even to show that he, he has the smarts to be like a master computer programmer, but is just, uh, I'll just work at Best Buy, whatever. I, I think they only, they mentioned the ex-wife once solely so people wouldn't be sane. So the highlight of this guy's whole life is that he played Donkey Kong when he was nine years old? Yeah, that's all they got into with yeah, his character. That's all they got into. Like they, they kept mentioning his like ability and his potential. But what is that potential? What was yeah, that? the Michelle Moynihan character when they have their little romantic scene, she's like, "You're you're destined for great things." Where? How did you come to this conclusion? Right. His only skill set is playing video games, right. and not even vi all video games. Only like three. Very specific. <laughs> three very specific video games. Thirty-year-old video games. Yes. It's a specialty. The ones in the movie are the only ones I know how to play. I don't. I didn't progress. I didn't progress. <laughs> Well, considering Kevin James was in it with Adam Sandler, I thought they would split main character duties. Adam Sandler would, would redeem himself um, and get back together with his ex-wife, his son, and I thought Kevin James was going to get the girl, the, the person who works in the government. Sure. And, uh, but I was totally wrong about that. 
he just had a wife and he put too many sprinkles on the cake. Do you, do you remember that hilarious B plot about him and his wife uh, hating each other? Oh yeah, that went nowhere, had no purpose. And they even cast the comedic actress in the role and gave her literally nothing to do. I don't think she had one line. She had a couple lines, but none, none of them even like an attempt at a joke. No. And she's funny, Jane Krakowski. She's very funny. But, but they had cake. <laughs> and then and then he was very uncomfortable trying to tell her that another woman was attractive because she asked. And then she just vanished from the movie. <laughs> Poochie went off and went back to his home planet. We've never faced a threat like this before. We need video game expertise. These guys were champions back in 82. Sam Brenner, Pac-Man world champion. What's up? Ludlow Lemonsoft, master of centipede. Also known as your worst nightmare. Okay, Josh Gad will like to eat things. <laughs> um, maybe fart. Nobody farted. We should mention there, there was a, a Josh Gad uh, two butt cracks. If that oh, counts, yeah. there was no yeah. there was no farting. There was no farting. Um, he will be a sex pervert who makes awkward advances on women. But this, this was before I saw like. There was like 10 trailers for like children's films and there was like, like I heard little kids all over the theater. I was like, yeah. oh, is this like a G-rated film? Well, it turns out he makes all sorts of moves on men in this movie. Yeah, there's like there's, no there's some gay panic stuff in there. But this. he's not gay, as we learn later in the film. So he's just randomly like slapping dudes' asses for no... Well, he tries to he tries to kiss Adam Sandler on the mouth. He does, but he's not gay. It, not, it doesn't make any sense. I think like the whole thing was just like, he doesn't know anything about anything. Be, yeah. So he's into dudes and girls. It, it, he's silly. His character trait is that he's silly. Adam and Tim Hurley and Tim Dowling wrote a character that was really eccentric. So Josh Gad is in love with a video game lady. Yeah, that's we know he's in love with her because he says it. Uh, for the first 20 minutes of the movie, and he foreshadows things very subtly by saying, if she was a real person, we would be in love for the rest of our life. Like, it's so awkward and bad, the but way Jay, it's delivered. Weren't you shocked when she showed up at the end? I was shocked that she showed up at the end, <laughs> pixelated for two seconds, and then just became normal looking hot lady, because yeah. we can't have him fall in love with a pixel character. So it's just woman now for no reason. Every single other bad guy, enemy, is a fairly nice 3D rendering of a square pixel monster. You know, we get, we get the paper boy, we get uh, the, the Galaga guys, right? And all of a sudden, the pixel lady from whatever game that was called shows up and she morphs into the actress, a human lady. Who's a, who, by the way, is a real actress who has been in other things where she delivers lines, which she doesn't do in this film. I'm sorry, lady. I, I hope you're a good actress. Was her line, keep putting it in my vagina? <laughs> Are you imp ah. implying that she is a p pornographic actress? That's what I was implying. Oh, okay, okay. Close, she was in a Harmony Korine film. Oh. That's like an embarrassing porno. <laughs> 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 but she's a real lady for some reason. She, yeah, yeah. She's a real lady for some for some reason, and she starts attacking Josh. For Gad. no reason, huh? For no reason. You said for some reason. For no reason there, is more accurate. There is no reason because they don't know that Josh Gad is in love with her. If they knew, then that would be a good reason to make her into a real lady to trick yeah. him for some reason. Oh, if they could the read there. our brains, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But there is no reason. So, so Jay is correct. Sure. There, the, for some reason, is wrong. Uh, you know, okay, you know what? I take that back. Then I take that back. But and anyway, she turns into a lady, and you know, Josh Gad has what is supposed to be a comedy moment, and I love you. I've always loved you. And then she starts attacking him because she's the bad guy. But then, for no reason. <laughs> Josh Gad stops fighting her and and professes his love again. No, well, that's actually wrong. It's he professes his long f love for some reason <laughs> because he actually is in love with her. For no reason, well, well, she was gonna gets get emotional. No yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's that's what I was gonna get to. Is for no reason then she decides to join up with the humans. Yeah. Look, at, at that point in the movie, does it matter? <laughs> yes, everything matters in the I, movie. I think some level of logic does matter in a movie. Well, okay, no, it doesn't. <laughs> as long as the movie is funny and entertaining. Okay, fair because enough. Because this, you're not supposed to believe that pixelated characters come to Earth. 
Right. It's so stupid. It's, it's, it's a, you can't take that concept seriously. So if you can't take the concept seriously, at least have jokes. But they have Madonna on a TV saying, we will destroy you. Because remember the 80s? Remember, remember the 80s? Remember these 80s rock songs? We're gonna play those throughout the whole film. I, I have some issues. <laughs> uh, good. The, the, the aliens, the aliens get their information from a, a probe that was sent out in oh, 1982. I, you know, I was just about to talk about this. Yeah, but there's things that show up from after 1982. Like Max Hedrum, I don't think it was a thing until like 84? Oh, yeah, that's true. A little bit later, yeah. yeah. Really, Rich, for a second, I thought you were going to talk about how a probe sent out in 1982 would probably be near uh, oh, the inner solar system only. The Voyager probe sent out in the 70s is just barely leaving our solar system. So mm -hmm. at least in, in Star Trek The Motion Picture, they, they speculate that the Voyager probe may have entered a wormhole. You could come up with any bullshit excuse to have aliens turn themselves into video games and attack the Earth, but you gotta make it funny. Uh... I will say, the one, the one positive thing I have to say about the movie is all of the video game characters and the pixelized bricks, mm -hmm. those all look neat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's the only positive thing I really have to say. And there was, there was, I hadn't seen the short film before we saw this. There was one moment during the big end battle that was, I, I saw, I thought was a really clever visual gag. And I was like, that's way too smart. That has to be from the short film. <laughs> and it turns, it turns out that it was. <laughs> it's when the Tetris uh, pieces are falling onto the building. And then they, you know, they line up and they go, Bloop, and then the building collapses. <laughs> I was like, that's way too smart for this movie. And it turns out it's directly taken from the short. Yeah. The, the, the computer animators, the visual effects people. Uh, uh, the distracting part for, for me was I saw the laziness come through it. I saw Adam Sandler going, well, we could shoot this, this stuff. We don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll just hand it off to this company that'll make all the things happen. I, I remember seeing like a pan around shot, you know, and the only two things in the frame are like Peter Dinklage and Josh Gad, and they got the guns. Oh, sure. There's just all this stuff going on. They're just going, ah, okay, we're done. You know, and Adam Sandler <laughs> runs by and like, you know. You, I, I really noticed it during the first alien attack, uh, the centipede attack. But yeah, and then at one point Adam Sandler grabs a gun because he's like, you're doing it wrong. There's a pattern. And he starts shooting. And you can tell, like, he has the most bored expression on his face where he's just like. Yeah. And he's like, ah, oh, they're just going to add everything in later, whatever. And he just does this. Yeah. I was shocked initially at the start of that scene because they're like. They, the next spot's gonna be in London. Yeah. And they, they, do, they have like a stock footage shot of them flying over London. Then it cuts to them in like a field with like trees. Yeah. And it's London because there are so soccer players there. You don't think they actually shot that in London? I don't think so. I'm okay. pretty sure they didn't. <laughs> like, I'm like, I wanna see Big Ben get smashed and, and you know, the, 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 the big the, Ferris wheel. The Thames River. Right, and the London Bri London Bridge is falling down. It oh, fell down, oh, okay. and then Adam Sandler says, "London Bridge is falling down. It's no time for nursery rhymes. No, for real." <laughs> but but anyway, they go to a field. There's a, a field. <laughs> yes. the, the the centipede does go out into a street, but you, you know it's just a street, and it yeah. goes through like some old lady's apartment building. I guess there is a, a deaf elderly person joke there, right? Yes. The old lady's doing like... The centipede goes into her apartment and she's doing aerobics, perfectly, she doesn't that's notice. That's perfectly acceptable. The centipede does aerobics for a little yeah. bit. Eh, you know, it's, you know. See, that's, and I guess this is too much to ask for this movie, but that shows an incon... Like, the whole idea is that they're following the formulas of these video games, right. but that's like, for no reason, the centipede just stops doing that and attacks the city. Yeah, that's true. It doesn't... They're beating the game by the game's rules, but then the game just doesn't play by it the rules. It just does whatever yeah. it wants so we can have an action scene. But, but so, remember that whole scene that was supposed to be in the movie, we need the scene where the, the geek prevails, right? Like, no, my geeky, crazy methods are better than your standard military methods, right? But at that point, he had been already training the military guys on how to do all this stuff. Yeah. So then why wouldn't they let him do it too? Yeah, right. Because he was... Or why wouldn't they do the things that they were just trained to do in the previous scene? Well, they, 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 they were, yeah, that's a good point. They, they weren't as good as him, sure. but yeah, if they're, if he's a consultant, why, you know, it would, the logic that he ran up and took over was the logic of, I'm a bystander behind the police line who thinks he knows better and I'm gonna jump over and run past security right. and do right. it. Because they really cared about realism and it would have been too silly if he just went right into the thick of things from the start. <laughs>
But he was in there, like he was. He, well, he was trying to tell them what to do, and they're like, and uh, Brian Cox or whoever, Sean Bean, maybe I don't even remember. One of them was just like, "Don't listen to that guy," even though we've been listening to that guy for the last ten minutes. Well, the I, entire I, previous scene. Yeah. I think br the Brian Cox character had like a nerd prejudice, right? And then he was like, ah. "I don't know what's better, if losing to the aliens or letting these guys." Yeah, win. like he was very angry, and and that's fine. That's like a movie character, yeah. and I expected him to do something to. Like, I'm gonna do it my way. I'm gonna, gonna get the nukes out and oh no, you know, like, but instead he just kind of like goes, eh. And then he just sort of disappears from and the And then movie. it ends, yeah. yeah. They, yeah they, they really needed to try and use like conventional military things against him because they never do that. There was and, no... then, and then just have it completely fail. Yeah. And then that's when your that's your Adam Sandler jumps in with the video game logic. Yes. Yeah. Or, yeah, that or been... yeah. the first attempt to stop them is us shooting missiles or sending military jets. You know, uh, they needed to remake Independence Day. They were lazy with their framework. We always say it's a framework to to hang stuff on. Yeah, they were lazy with on. their framework, like like having Kevin James be the president of the United States, who just happened to be friends with Adam Sandler as a kid, like terrible. Yeah, at least have just some some stuffy president have a military attempt fail and then go, oh, these are video games. We better dig up the schmucks from you know the gutter to come up and help yeah. instead it, from the beginning adam sandler was like hanging out in the white house like lazy lazy writing yeah shit so so you, you need a, a a framework to hang jokes on but this movie had no framework and it had no jokes no it, it, it had nothing but what you got from the two minute short which is the good stuff which is the good stuff yeah the two minute short had everything that this movie had uh, without wading through these fucking boring scenes <laughs> where Adam Sandler was talking to people endlessly for hours. It was just fucking boring. Yeah. It was more, more cinematic looking than recent Adam Sandler movies, though, because it was directed by Chris Columbus, who, I, I guess his... The guy who founded America? The guy who founded America. Actually, Chris Columbus's company is like 1492 Productions or something like that, but his best work... Uh, was done in the 80s. Yeah, is so is he the connection. one who's, who's directing the fucking racist Indian film? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't progress. Early on, Peter Dinklage in the, in, the, in the 1982 beats Adam Sandler as a kid at the Donkey Kong World Championship. Yes. And, uh, and Adam Sandler thought he was the best. And blah, 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 blah. Flash forward to the Pac-Man scene where they're all driving around in little cars. And the, the lady, what's her name? Michelle Moynihan. Michelle Moynihan is watching the screen and Peter Dinklage's ghost car goes real fast, which is not physically possible with a real car. Right. But anyway, she's like, how did he do that? Never mind. And then they brought it up later. He, on his, inside of his sunglasses, he has this like mathematical formula, which is, cheat codes. which is a cheat code. Yeah. And uh, apparently he had used a cheat code in the eight, 1982 while playing Donkey Kong. And he also used them on Pac-Man. Yeah. Rich Evans, you are a Pac-Man expert. Yeah. <laughs> this is true about Rich Evans. Okay. He's played a lot of Pac-Man. Uh, he, he, he loves swallowing balls. Is there a, such a thing as a Pac-Man cheat code? No, there is no such thing as a Pac-Man cheat code. I don't think any of those old arcade games had cheat codes. Well, here's a better question. How do you use a cheat code in reality to make a car go ultra fast? Because oh. the car has a cheat code. I guess. Built into the Mexico really fast. That's the, like, I'm okay, like, okay, cheat code in Pac-Man, whatever. It doesn't make any sense, but it's a movie. But it's the reality of, like, he uses a cheat code on his car that he's driving? That, that was a, a terrible way to introduce the fact that he's a cheater. Yeah. That's his character, and that's fine as an angle. He's a cheater, they, they, well, actually, it makes no sense at the end either. <laughs> See, that's that's oh, no, problem. it is because at the end, uh, the uh, uh, what's his name, Adam Sandler, <laughs> he realizes he is the Donkey Kong champ, and he has, that gives him the like the, the confidence, the to, confidence yeah. to go ahead and fight the Donkey Kong and not be scared anymore. Yeah. So the, all that led to that, which is fine. No, um, no, but see, that's my real problem. Like, you know what? The cheat code works on the car because fuck it, it's a movie. I'm o I am okay with that because you know why? It's a movie, and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with Rich's face on this one. Sure. Cube, can I kill it? No. We try to stay true to the real games themselves in the context of doing something in a three-dimensional world. 
You, you know what else wasn't funny? Anytime Qbert talked. Because Qbert talks now, and they gave him whoever did his voice. Well, fine, he talks. Yeah, I'm a fine. cutesy voice. They, yeah. they gave him a cutesy voice, and I noticed that was the only thing that anyone in the theater responded to, because our theater was like dead silent. And occasionally when Qbert would say something, and people would like go, oh. But, but he's, an adorable, he's an adorable character that everybody loves. And then in the end, he kind of gets erased and turned into a woman, and everybody's happy about that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. That was so weird. Josh Gad gets the woman as a trophy. The woman is a literal trophy in the movie. She's such a strong woman. She's tough, and nothing stops her. I think it's important for girls to see that they can do anything the guys can do. And he fucks a woman, and then in the post-credit thing, uh, he has Qbert babies. Yeah. She apparently gave birth to Qbert babies. You think Qbert? by himself would just suffice. I mean, look at his mouth. And plus, he, you know, oh, he's not gonna talk afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Describe Cubert fellatio more. I think this, this is what we need. What a weirdo. What's, uh, I, I, uh, there's so little room left in my heart for Adam Sandler hate. Yeah. Yeah, I will say, like, watching this, like, is there, I, people go into Adam Sandler movies now, uh, people like us, uh, wanting to, like, hate them and rip them apart, and there's a lot of that online right now for Pixels. It's almost not even worthy of getting angry about. It's more just sort of, like, confusing and sad and boring. Sad is <laughs> the appropriate yeah. word, yeah. Yeah, because you look at Jack and Jill, and, and a movie like that was, was frustrating at how transparent the sleaze was in well, it. That was eye-opening for us. It was very eye-opening. Yeah. This is, is sad or pathetic. It feels very pathetic. Mm -hmm. it, it, the, I like the Pac-Man sequence. That was about it. Other than that, I felt sorry for every actor in it. You know, we both talk about we're getting older, man, and we're going to have to pull the plug someday, but every time we do it, we go, hey, man, this idea is pretty fun, and we get excited again. Adam Sandler looks... He's like the sad clown now, like yeah. where he's not even trying, and it's just, it's like watching Orson Welles and doing a wine commercial. <laughs> ah, the French champagne. Action, please. Ah, the French. Like, remember in any other movie where aliens attack the Earth, how the aliens' first attack has a massive build-up to it? And, and there, there's some excitement, there's some tension in there because we don't know what's coming. And, and all of a sudden, boom, the attack comes. And remember how in Pixels, they, they just show up fucking five minutes into the it's movie? It's just like, what is it, Guam? Is that where they're at? It just says Guam. And then they just go, Phew. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you guys saying Pixels fucked something up? <laughs> is, that, is that your point? That's the general consensus, yes. Huh. I know this changes everything. This changes everything. <laughs>Get out. Fine. You win for now, nerds. We'll leave. But first, we'd like to go in the back. We left some personal items back there we need to collect. They're next to your safe, which we have the combination to. Okay. Great. That's no, that's no problem. <laughs> I told you those guys were pushovers. Right. No paycheck. No more VCR repair shop. <laughs> 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 Jay and Mike, you fuckers left me to freeze to death on that mountain, and for that, you're going to die. No, 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 him, you hit him for no. Bonza Daljevic, you son of a bitch.
Mike, or whichever one of you I'm currently stabbing. <laughs> you didn't fix my VCR. Why didn't you fix my VCR? I just wanted to watch Night Court and you tried to freeze me to death! Take that, Mike and Jay! You motherfuckers left me on a mountain to die! Almost starved to death in goddamn Nepal! Well, that was disappointing. I can't believe they have the only existing copy of The Day the Clown Cried. Who cares? Is that worth anything? It is to Jerry Lewis. Hmm. What the fuck? Oh my god, it's a bloodbath! Burn in hell, you motherfuckers! Mr. Plinkett? What? Who's that? Who's talking? I can't see anything. My glasses are too frosted from the fucking cold. Oh. Oh, um. um. Why, my name is Mark. And I'm Jim. Oh, what do you guys do? Um, we repair VCRs. Oh, oh, that's great, because I need my VCR fixed. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that makes sense. I'll be right back. So cold. <laughs>